Hi, and thank you for joining me again for another Affinity Designer tutorial. Today we're going to be creating the sunburst pattern. This lesson comes directly from our book, the Affinity Designer Manual version 2, lesson number 12. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First, we're going to create a new document. If you don't have this new document screen here, you come up here to File and press New. And we want to create a social media square post, so click on that. And we want the color of the document to be, have a transparent background. So click here on the transparent background and then press create. Okay. Now what we want to do next is create, go to the tools and click on the cog shape here. Your tool might be the rounded rectangle. So all you have to do is click and hold on this tool. And the other uh, shape tools will pop out. Come down here to the cog tool and release. So the cog tool is now the tool that we're going to be using. Now let's go to the toolbar and we want to click on the snapping icon. So this is the snapping icon here. It looks like a, a, a an old magnet. You know the tool is active when it's depressed or it's darkened. So that's not active and that's active. Okay, so make sure it's active. All right, so because it's active, we can move our cursor to the middle of our document and these guidelines will appear and it will tell us exactly where the center is right here. So now we want to click and drag and create our cog shape so it's in the direct center of our document. And we can do this a special way. We can hold down the shift key plus the uh, control key on the Windows computer or the command key on a Mac. So you're going to hold down shift, control, or command. So do that now. Shift, Control, Command, nothing changes. So now we want to click and drag out our cog shape. And when we do this, because we're holding down these two keys, the shape is going to uh, originate from its center. So there you go. Okay, that's, that's big enough. It doesn't have to be exactly my size. It can be up here. It can be here. It doesn't matter because we're going to change it in just a moment. And then release your mouse. Now it's directly in the center of our document. Now we want to go to and make some changes to this shape. We could use these red nodes here and make the changes, but we don't want to do that. We, for this lesson, we're going to go to the contextual toolbar. So the contextual toolbar is right here. So the top, the very top, this is the menu bar. This is the toolbar, and this is the contextual toolbar right here. We want to change the teeth number to 20, so we're going to click on this and type 20 and press the return key. You can also use a slider if you want. Um, I personally prefer the clicking in the value box and pressing return probably every single time. So that's just me. Next, we want to skip the inner radius and we want to come over here to the whole radius and we want to type zero. Put zero on your keyboard and press return. And now we want to come back to the inner radius and we want this also to be zero and then press return. Now we needed to do that. First we need to do the teeth and then the whole radius and then the inner radius. If you do the teeth and then the inner radius to zero and then the whole radius zero, it doesn't work for some reason. So first the teeth, then the whole radius at zero, press return inner radius, zero, press return, and now we're going to come back here to the tooth size. Right now it's 37, so we want 27. So you click on the value box so it turns blue like that, and you type 27 and press return. Okay, so that's exactly what we want. Now I'm going to come to the document here and I want to zoom out of the document so that the whole document is a little bit smaller. So I want to zoom out, and there's a couple ways we can do that. We can press the uh, command or control button and the negative sign and make it smaller and bigger by pressing the plus sign. Personally, uh, we all have computers, so we all have trackpads. So I just like using the trackpad. So with my two fingers on the trackpad, I'll uh, uh, squeeze my fingers outwards or inwards. So I want to make it smaller, so I'm bringing my fingers inwards. So I want about that size just so that I can, I can see the document easier on my canvas because I need to, we, we're going to make some changes to the cog shape now. All right, so now that we have the, uh, the cog shape, what we want, 
the size that we want. We want to expand the shape so that it extends beyond the border of our document. So come over here to the Layers panel. Just click on it again. Make sure it's activated. Come over here to the uh, Tools. Click on the Move tool. And now in these corners here, what we're going to do is we're going to drag it up so it extends. But you can see that doing that is not very precise. See how it kind of changes everything? So to fix what I just fix that mistake that I just made, I'm going to press Command or Control Z. There you go. And that brings it back to where it was. Oops, I pressed it twice. So if you press Command or Control Z too many times, you can press Shift Command Control Z, and that redoes what you the mistake that you just made. Okay, so now we're back where we were when we changed the um, the different sizes on the contextual toolbar. So now we've activated the Move tool. And we want to come up to this, this corner here. And again, we're going to hold down the Shift and the Command and Control keys. So hold down those buttons now, those two buttons. And then we're going to click and drag this top right node this direction. And when we do that, again, it's going to uh, increase its size based upon the, the center point here. So click and drag it out. And we want the... Uh, cog shape to be beyond the edges of the uh, document like that okay very good this is what your document should look like now I'm going to decrease the size one more time by pinching inwards with my fingers just so it's a little smaller okay very good now that we have the shape the cog shape how we want it for our sunburst pattern we're going to duplicate this layer so that there's gonna be two of these cog shapes so press Command or Control J on your keyboard. And look over here in the Layers panel. You can see that the, the layer has now been duplicated. All right? One thing I, I teach a lot in my, or I say a lot in my videos is that it's important for new users to understand that when you duplicate a layer, the duplicated layer, the one on top, you if you look at the actual document uh, or the image right in the middle of the canvas, you will not see a change. But it is there. The duplicate is there. So it's important that you know what a duplicated layer does. It, so it, it completely copies the original image or the shape and copy and makes a new layer. And you can't see the change until you make some kind of change to this top layer. So now what we want to do is that we want to rotate this second cog shape, again, that you can't see. We're going to rotate it to the right in this direction. 45 degrees. Now there's a trick with rotating objects in Affinity Designer. If we hold down the shift key and then we click and drag this, this top rotational node, you see how the, the cursor turns into the two arrow cursor? That's right. So we want to rotate it this way. So we're going to rotate it. And you can see the R value at the top of the, the document. It's like R minus 11.1 degrees, 0.2, okay? So that's not very precise. So we want it to be very precise. So we're going to release the mouse button here. We're going to press Command or Control Z to return the cog shape back to where it was. Now we're going to hold down the Shift key. And then again, up here at the uh, directional node, we're going to click and we're going to drag it 45 degrees, one, two, three times. So 45 degrees. And then we're going to release our mouse's uh, button. So now let's look at the layers panel again. So now we have the bottom layer and look at the document. See how it, it's never moved? And then let's click on the top layer and the top layer it has moved. You see that? Okay, great. So now that we have a duplicated layer, our shape is looking pretty good. Now I want to talk about the shape that you see in the middle of the screen. On, in my document, because I'm the one making this video, I can make it a little bit more precise, but maybe your cog shape is not your new duplicated cog shape. Maybe it's not extending all the way beyond the borders of the document, okay? Maybe, maybe it's not. So again, all you have to do is come on one of these corner nodes, not this one here, but one of the corner nodes. Let's you know do this one here. Hold down Shift and Command or Control again, and then click and drag it out, okay? And then click and drag it out so it goes beyond the border of the document. 
All right, so now your document and my document should look exactly the same. I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit here. Okay, now, now we want to uh, create a black background to our document. So let's click over here on the canvas. So all the layers are deactivated now. So now we want to come over here to the tools and click on the rectangle tool. And we're going to click and drag a rectangle across the entire document like that. So now if you look on the layers panel now, we have our two cog shapes here. And at the top, we have the new, uh, new, the new rectangle layer. It's at the very top. Remember, whenever we create new, doc, new uh, layers or shapes, they're always going to be at the top of the layers panel. So now all we have to do here to make this color black is come up here to the color wheel. And if you don't have the color wheel visible, if you come over here to this, this uh, menu icon and click on it, maybe you have sliders visible or you have the boxes visible. But we want the color wheel. So you come over here and click on it. It's where it says wheel. And then we're going to move this inner node straight up. So that on our document here in the middle of the screen, our rectangle layer is, is now black. So yeah, in the middle of the screen, the what we see is a black square. And on our layers panel, the rectangle is now black. So now to make this the background, all you have to do is click and drag this to the bottom of the layers stack. So click and drag it. That's it. So now if you look at our image, it looks kind of like a, a cool black and white white psychedelic image. So let's click on the move tool here or press the letter V on your keyboard and then click on the canvas and then those guidelines disappear. So this is our image now. Okay, very good. This is exactly where we want to be. Um, before we uh, started this lesson or before um, when I created this lesson, I chose three specific colors that I would like to be using here. So we, I want um, each cog shape is going to have its own color and the background color is going to be different as well. So what we want to do is that we're going to change the rectangle color to this new color. So the way that we're going to do that, uh, we're going to use the uh, hex value box here in the color studio. So double click on that. Okay. And we're going to change it to F7 D0 one four f seven d zero one four and press the return key now if you look at our image it looks totally different looks a lot more happy okay good now we want to click on the middle cog layer we're going to change that color and we again go up to the colors panel click on the hex value box, double click on it. And we're going to type F A zero six C seven. Okay. Again, F A zero six C seven, and then press the return key. There you go. And now the middle cog has been changed the color that, that we want. Okay, again, we're gonna do the same thing for the top layer. So click on that. Again, go to the layers panel, double click on the hex value box, and we're gonna type the third code, which is 2DF7F2. Again, I'll repeat that. Two D F seven F two. And then you want to press the return key. And there you are. We are finished. We have now created our sunburst pattern. Again, we can click on the canvas area here and that's our pattern. Now, if you want to save this document so you can like use it for whatever it is that you like to use, you can come up here to file and you can do save as and then you can save it however you want so that in the future you can pull this up again and if you save it as a as a um, affinity design file you can save 
all of these layers and you can come back and change these colors anytime you want. All right, so that ends our video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like to have uh, me make more videos, please like, share, and subscribe this video. And this is Frank Walters signing off. Bye.